So how did Jack Vance's The Dying Earth influence D&D? Uh, this is the next Appendix N chat, talking about the books that Gary Gygax put in his list of official influences on 1st edition D&D. So Vance was a seminal influence on Gygax, uh, and not just by The Dying Earth books, which I've got the compendium or, or whatever of here, uh, but also the Leoness books. And this was to the point, such an important influence was Vance that uh, Gygax named the famous god Vecna after him. Vecna was just an anagram of Vance. So that's how important. And they did correspond as well in the 70s. They, they were in touch, uh, as Gygax was with maybe one or two other appendix and contributors. Now, The Dying Earth specifically offers three obvious direct influences on Gygax. One uh, potential influence, and then what I'm going to call like, like a thematic or indirect influence, or general influence. So the three specific things are, the magic items definitely take some influence from this uh, if you're looking at your, your DMG magic items. Dying Earth characters have wands with preloaded magic effects, and they've got amulets which scan food for poison, etc. In a general sense, this is one of the most obvious influences of the Dying Earth on uh, first edition Dungeon Master's Guide items. Uh, bigger, I think, than Hawkmoon, bigger than uh, Lord of the Rings even. And Lord of the Rings, you think, well, invisibility rings, that's where they come from. But, and certainly that's true, but I think here you've got a, there, there's a sort of slightly over the top and technological view of magic items, which comes out here, which is definitely an influence. Second, connected to that, uh, are the strange magic absorbing Ayun stones that first appear, I believe, in a 1973 story, Moraeon, uh, in the Rialto the Marvelous collection. And apparently Gygax corresponded with Vance over this afterwards, and these are directly taken into the uh, into the Dungeon Master's Guide with wider explicit uses. They're not just magic absorbing. It's not clear. They obviously have other powers in this book, um, but uh, the only thing they're ever explicitly mentioned for having, I think, apart from maybe memory effects, is uh, that they are able to absorb magic. Uh, but there are more things that they can do in, in D&D. But they're just a direct takeover, and I think that was with permission from Vance. Um, I don't think there's any copyright issue over that. And the most famous influence that's obviously direct is on magic, on the magic of D&D. In 1st edition and 2nd edition and basic, magic is what we call Vancean magic. That is, you memorise specific spells, and when you cast them, they disappear. You can't use them again. Um, in later editions of D&D, um, there's a more flexibility. I'm thinking particularly about 5th, obviously, where... You memorise certain spells and then you can they have a flexible number of uses per day. So if you memorise Magic Missile and you've got three first level spells, you can cast all of them as Magic Missile or one and then the rest are different. In earlier editions you have to cast the set spell that you've memorised. So you have one Magic Missile and then you've got one Unseen Servant or whatever it might be. Now that is directly from this. In this, magic is this semi-alive sort of energy being or something that lodges in your brain and uh, escapes when you use it. And uh, another connected point that's pretty clearly from this is the the habit of having slightly funky, over-the-top spell names. Uh, later on, Terry Pratchett also directly takes this over. But here, so for instance, uh, Otterluke's Freezing Sphere, uh, as an example, or Tensor's Floating Disc. Those are D&D spells here, on page 5 of the first story in this collection, uh, Tur Turgeon of Mir, we have the excellent prismatic spray, Fandal's Mantle of Stealth, and Spell of the Slow Hour. Those are the three spells that, uh, that, uh, that Turgeon memorises in that story. Uh, so yeah, magic is an obvious big influence. One potential influence as well, along with other sources, are the Sandestines, who are uh, minor demon-like entities with bad attitudes, um, and though, one, there's a general habit, you know, you can look at Dr. Faustus uh, and that general tradition for more on the idea of summoning demons and, and making deals with them. The idea of demons as ser minor servitors, in a slightly comical sense, seems to me to emerge with Jack Vance and with um, Elspride de Camp and, and Lynn Carter. So that's a potential influence. And there's a less explicit influence discernible as well, uh, Kugel style. Kugel is a character in two of the novels in this four novel collection, and he is 
basically this terrible person, maybe too terrible, sometimes he's a bit annoying to read about, but he's also entertaining and he, he's just out for his own. And this, uh, Kugel is obviously a, an influence, as one, of my, as one of my commenters once said, an influence on D&D play. The idea that people are going in and just thinking, ah, oh, what's the main chance here? And it's implied, I think, this attitude is implied by the loot first model of gold as XP. Um, I don't think that means that gold as XP only makes kugels. What I mean is the idea that you can see the game in those terms uh, is one possibility of gold as XP. And it's very much picked up uh, by generations of players. You know, you have anarchic, ruthless, slightly sociopathic characters. Um, this is a massive influence, perhaps less on directly on Gygax uh, and more on OSR players, particularly um, of, of basic. Um, it's it's less inherent in the DNA, I think, of first edition, where you tend to have a higher investment per character that, and there tend to be a wider range of, of objectives and things going on in modules. That, But certainly there are a range of basic modules where, uh, including some very iconic ones, where really the whole game can be played Kugel style, and that is both in the 70s and in the Renaissance now. So those are what I think are some influences of Jack Vance and the Dying Earth novels, particularly on Dungeons and Dragons. Um, if I've missed any, why don't you add them below? And uh, and just if there's any other reflections you have on the connection between uh, the Dying Earth and those books and D&D, &D, tell me in the comments. Till next time.